Today we'll be installing EMC Scalio version 1.30 using the vSphere web client. To get started, we'll click the EMC Scalio icon. When the plugin is loaded in the left pane, we notice that one or more Scalio systems, protection domains, storage pools, data servers and clients, as well as their volumes and devices can be managed. Because this is a new installation, we will choose Deploy Scalio System and accept our license agreement. Our only installation option is to create a new Scalio system. Here we enter a distinct name for our new installation because we can manage multiple Scalio systems from the same web client. To choose ESX host for our Scalio cluster, we must first select a vCenter server. When we've selected that vCenter server, it will display the hosts and clusters it manages. We can then select which hosts our cluster will reside on of which we must have three. This is because three hosts must provide the roles of primary MDM, secondary MDM, and tiebreaker for the cluster. We'll select a Scalio SVM template to be deployed to each of the hosts we previously selected. Each SVM will provide data services from storage available to each host. We'll manage our cluster from a management network, but data will be accessed between SVMs and ESX hosts or on one or more data networks. So we'll enter a descriptive name for our data network that each SVM will use to communicate with each other, as well as a descriptive VM kernel name for the VM kernel interfaces that will access the SVMs via iSCSI. Because we've not configured our data NIC, we will select a physical NIC from each host that the data network and VM kernel interfaces will be connected to on a single vSwitch. We'll enter a range of VM kernel IP addresses, which will be individually assigned to each of the host's ScaleIO VM kernel interface. And we will assign it to each of our hosts. The installer then creates the VM kernel interfaces on each host, as well as the data network on the same virtual switch. So we'll select our data network. And each SVM must have a distinct management and data IP address. So we'll enter a range which will be assigned to the management virtual NICs of the SVMs as well as the subnet mask and gateway settings. The data virtual NICs only require an IP range and subnet mask, but no gateway setting as we will not be routing the data network. Our Scalio cluster requires at least one protection domain, which we'll add here. Each protection domain requires at least one storage pool. A default storage pool is automatically created, so we don't need to create one. If we choose, we can add a fault set. We now need to choose the roles that each ESX host will perform. Scalio data client or server, which protection domain the SDS will reside in, and if a fault set to be used. For the ESX hosts that have been designated to have the data server role, we must pick storage resources from each host to be provided to the protection domain it resides in, as well as select the pool that the storage device will be presented to. All available devices or individual devices may be selected. We've selected a single storage device per ESX host in this demonstration. If we choose to configure call home or DNS, they're entered here. 
We are now ready to start our initial deployment of EMC ScaleAO on vSphere. Once the deployment process has begun, we are returned to the main ScaleAO configure, configuration screen. The deployment process is detailed for each host as well as an aggregate log for all tasks. When the process is, process is complete, we select Finish. If we select ScaleIO Systems in the left plane, it will show us additional details for the cluster just deployed. Returning to Protection Domains, Information about the domain created will be shown including state, capacity, number of storage pools, data servers. Drilling down into the domain, we'll see the storage pool, data server, and fault set information. We can also add fault sets here. As well as add additional SDS devices. If we choose SDS, we see the data servers that are connected to the cluster, their capacity, and their state. Selecting an individual SDS will show the domain it belongs to, what devices it is presenting to the cluster, any fault sets it belongs to, new fault sets can be added here, or additional devices can be added to be consumed by the cluster. If volumes is selected, we will see any volumes that have been created in this new installation, none have been created. To see the data network and Scaleo VM kernel interfaces that were, cre were created, we will look at the networking configuration of the hosts. Select a host, choose networking. Notice the vSwitch SIO, which was created by our installer. Selecting this vSwitch will show our data network and VM kernel interfaces have been created. Traditionally, ScaleIO has presented block volumes to ESX hosts from the data client running in the SVM via the iSCSI protocol. By replacing the SDC component in SVMs with the data client VIB, the SDC can be run on the ESX host rather than inside the VM. After the VIB has been installed, it must be connected to the ScaleIO cluster. We'll connect to the ScaleIO cluster and then confirm the connection by querying the metadata manager. We've connected to our cluster and now we'll confirm. We'll do this for each host. Swapping over to the command line, we'll confirm that all of our host SDCs are connected. While we're here, we'll create a new thinly provisioned volume that is one terabyte in size on the default storage pool. And then we will map the volume to all of our SDCs. Go 
we query all of our volumes, we'll see cluster 2 volume 1 has been added and mapped to four SDCs. Moving back to the vSphere web client, if we look at the storage adapters on our host, we'll see a new fiber channel HBA with a one terabyte device on each host. Adding a new block data store is exactly the same here as adding any other block device. We'll choose VMFS, we'll provide a name, ScaleIO Volume 1, we'll choose a host that is connected to our ScaleIO Volume, pick our 1 terabyte ScaleIO device. We'll choose the maximum capacity on the partition, create our, create our volume. We see that one host is connected right now. Refresh. Now we see all four hosts have access to the scaling volume.